So that was an excerpt from Virgil Donati's song, The Thinking Stone. And this is from the Planet X album entitled Quantum. And this is one of my favorite albums of all time. Virgil is one of my favorite drummers ever. And this is a really good example of what he calls layered grooves. Now the idea with these layered grooves is that you're essentially splitting your body into two halves. So you have the left side, your left hand and your left foot working together as a pair and the right side working together as its own pair. And Virgil has practiced this to the point that he can create the illusion of these two limb pairs, the left and right sides, being completely independent. Now this kind of side against side coordination is something that we don't see very often. Normally as drummers, we tend to think about coordination in terms of hands against feet. But some interesting things can happen once we start to divide the body up into different configurations. For example, if I split my body into a left and a right half, that opens up the possibility of using two snare drums, for example. One is more of an accompaniment part, like a repeating ostinato pattern and the other as more of a soloistic component. And together, these two sides can create the effect of say, two drummers playing a groove at two different tempos, which is exactly what's happening in this example on the Thinking Stone. Perhaps Virgil Zanotti's most well-known example of this kind of coordination, you might have seen a video of it or seen him demonstrate it at a clinic. Um, that is a paradiddle against double paradiddle layered groove. So one side will play a double paradiddle pattern. And then the other side will play single paradiddles. And then Virgil usually plays it the other way too, meaning the double paradiddle in the other side and the single paradiddle in the opposite side. And then for all of you overachievers out there, you can learn to switch sides on those patterns without stopping and go back and forth. I was actually inspired to make this video after coming across another video this week from a drummer named Austin Burcham. And in this video, he broke down an excerpt from a Virgil Donati solo, which is absolutely insane. Austin did a great job breaking this down. He provided a transcription of this excerpt, which was spot on. He clearly understands exactly what Virgil is doing here. And he did a really great job of explaining this to the viewer as well. So definitely check out Austin's video. In the video, one of the first things that he says is that, you know, normally he likes to play through all these excerpts um, when he does these videos. And this was the first one that he was not able to play. And even after, I guess, giving it a couple weeks or so of practicing, he wasn't able to play it. And this is no fault of Austin's. I mean, he's clearly a very advanced drummer. He understands exactly what's happening here. This stuff is so advanced that unless you had a lot of prior experience with practicing this kind of a thing, there's no way that you're gonna be able to pull this off in just a couple of weeks. So, you know, I wanna say that to let Austin off the, off the hook and let anybody else off the hook that is thinking about performing this. It takes time. It is all absolutely learnable. But if you don't have that background of learning that kind of a thing, you're gonna to have to do some work before you're able to do that. So at the end of the video, Austin extends an invitation to the viewer saying, if you're up for the challenge of learning this and you actually get to a point where you can physically execute it, definitely tag me on social. I'd love to see who can pull this off other than him. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a challenge that I'm gonna have a real hard time refusing, which is why I spent the last couple of days trying to learn this, this excerpt. 
Now, what's happening in this clip is that the left side is playing a repeating seven note ostinato. But this is further complicated by the fact that the meter that we're hearing is in 4-4. Four, four. So we're actually hearing this as triplets, and more specifically as 16th note triplets, in 4-4. Four, four. And this seven note left side pattern is going over the bar line. And then the idea is you're supposed to be able to solo freely with the right side. Now, when you watch Virgil play this, clearly he's extremely comfortable with this pattern. He's spent a lot of time practicing this. He's improvising. He's able to switch patterns and throw things in on command, um, which is another really just insane level to get to. But the good news is that most of what he's doing in the improvisation with the right side is based on a handful of stickings, meaning I don't need to be able to play everything against this ostinato. I only need to be able to play, say, three or four key stickings. And if I can master those three or four stickings, I should be able to play everything on this page. The first sticking or the first pattern that I need to master is a triplet sticking, which is just hand, foot, foot. If I can master that, I'll be able to play this, 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 this. Then if I can just master a second sticking, that's gonna get me most of the way through this piece. And that second sticking would be double strokes. So foot, foot, hand, hand, foot, foot, hand, hand. He's doing a lot of really interesting stuff with orchestration. He's moving the double strokes around the kit on different toms. He's accenting snares and, you know, not accenting others, but they're all based on double strokes. So if I can internalize that on a really deep level and then start playing around with the orchestrations, it's gonna sound like a lot more than it actually is, right? Because it's just double strokes at the end of the day. Then for this next part, it's back to the triplet sticking. Now, something interesting happens in this bar here, which is still a triplet sticking, but now it's been shifted over one note. So the accent is not on the first triplet, it's on the third. And over here we have the same thing, but with the triplet accent on the second note. And if I can master those three variations on this one sticking, that's gonna allow me to play all the way up through here. And then here at the end, finally, in the last two bars, we have two new stickings. And that would be paradiddles, which only happens for about, well, like two and a half beats, okay? So the paradiddles only happen once. Um, and then there's a five sticking here, which would be hand, foot, hand, foot, foot. But that's it. 90% um, of this solo is comprised of the triplet sticking in different permutations and double strokes. And so if I can master those two stickings, that's gonna get me most of the way there. And then just to play these last two bars, if I can throw in a couple paradiddles and that five, I'm gonna be in really good shape. I have put a lot of time into practicing these kind of rhythms and this kind of coordination very deeply over a period of many, many years. And although I had never worked on these exact patterns before, I'd worked on similar enough stuff that I was able to pick it up, you know, relatively quickly.
given this short time constraint, I was able to get it up to maybe 60 or 70% of the original tempo, but I can tell already that I've reached the point of diminishing returns. And even though I was able to learn technically how to play all the notes correctly in the space of three days, it's gonna take me three months or longer, maybe three years to get it up to Virgil's tempo. And so since this is such an enormous time commitment, I'm not gonna spend the next three years practicing Virgil's patterns so I can make this video. I'd rather put this video out and then spend those three years working on my own musical concepts. So I tend not to spend a lot of time practicing ostinato patterns that people have already done because it is a really time consuming thing. And in the very best case, if you are able to emulate that perfectly, then you just spent you know, the last however many months becoming a clone of something that has already been done. So I'd rather say, go watch Virgil's video. He already did it and mastered it. Um, I'm gonna go spend that time on my own music and hopefully that will create something that is at least valuable to me and maybe interesting and new for other people as well. So since we're talking about layered grooves and side against side coordination in Virgil Zanotti, I thought this would be a good opportunity to bring up some of these transcriptions that I made 10 years ago. Can you believe that? 10 years ago while I was studying at Berkeley. This is the intro of the Thinking Stone solo, which you heard earlier. And this is a transcription of the middle section, which is this crazy drum slash guitar solo thing, Alan Holtworth on guitar. And there's some really, really nuts stuff down here. And this is a transcription of Quantum Factor, which is another song that features this kind of coordination on the same album. I actually covered this song. I played it at my senior recital. There's a YouTube video on it that I did in 2010 or something. I have used this coordination, by the way, in a couple of my own songs. There is some of this coordination happening on a Sungazer song called Bird on the Wing. Anyway, that's one example where I've used it using double snare drums and toms and stuff to get sort of a soloing fill effect on one side plus the constant groove accompaniment on the other side. And there's also some of this kind of coordination happening in a song called Level One. Anyway, I think we've reached the end of this video, so I wanna thank Austin for inspiring this video. Virgil is without a doubt one of the most advanced drummers that has ever lived, and I think he's made enormous contributions to this instrument. I think he's helped push things forward and raise the bar for a lot of people, and I find that really inspiring. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, stay tuned for more stuff coming soon. Um, I will be at NAMM, by the way, this weekend, if anybody is there in LA. So hope to see you in LA. If not, I'll see you on the road with Sungazer after that on the East Coast. And otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.